In the last video, we modeled the boots itself. If you haven't watched that, it's on the top right corner. In this one, we're gonna add the stitches and texture it all inside Blender, using a layer by layer system that I'm gonna show you later in the video. But before we start, if you wanna download the 3D Falls and real time process video of making these boots and lots of other characters from the channel, you can check out my Gumroad and Patreon page. Check out the link in the description. Let's do it. First of all, before doing anything else, make sure you completely UV unwrap your boots. For this video, we're gonna use this free add-on which I linked below. This is gonna make our job much easier. Also I have a dedicated video about this add-on if you're interested. After you installed it, let's hold Z and go to material preview. Press N to bring up the right menu and select ravage add-on. Click on reset material then click on this icon to create a new layer. Name the material something like boots. Then change the name of the first layer to anything you want. I want to make leather boots so I name it main leather. Open up the channels tab. Go to the folder of the texture you just downloaded it. Now enable any map you see in the folder from the channels tab and disable anything that isn't in the folder. After that, in the material library, click on PBR setup. Go to the folder, select all of the texture maps and import them in. Then switch to other meshes of the shoe, assign the same leather material to this one too because we have a unified UV tile for all of the meshes. Notice the tip of the shoe is weird due to texture being too big. To fix that, we can enable proportion on editing. Select a few vertices and move them away from each other to have more details in the front. You can also use other tools like grab tool to stretch the UVs. Mess around with it until it looks decent. It looks too clean. We gotta make it look more worn out than used. One way to do it is to add more grunge and scratches. Create a new layer from here. Name it rusted. We're gonna use this layer for the grunge. Now find the rusted version of the material you're using. Mine is leather, so I need to find the rusted leather material. I choose this one and download it. Same process, check which maps are available in the folder and enable those in the channels tab in the ravage. Then PBR setup and import those maps. Increase the scale a bit. Now we have some scratches all all over the shoe. I don't want black leather, so let's change the color. First, switch to main leather, scroll down to the bottom, and click on these three lines icon, then change it to RGB, because we're gonna give it a color. I disabled the rusted layer for now to see the main one better. Then I change the color from here to something like brown. Now switch to rusted layer and enable it. Ambient occlusion was making it black because there wasn't any map in it, so I disabled it. We don't want the grunge to fill out the whole shoe, we just want it on the edges for it to look more dated and used. So while we're on the rusted layer, go to mask tab and create a new mask, then click on image. Click on this plus icon and name it something like this. Make it black and click on OK. After that, click on the brush icon so we can start painting on this texture. Pick up a white brush and start painting on these parts where you want it to be rusted. It mostly happens around the edges. Maybe the stitches parts too. Ravage usually saves your created image, but just in case, select the mask image from here and save it to a texture folder in your project so you won't lose it. Do the same thing for the other part of it too and make sure you save the image at the end. I want to add more color variety to the leather, so let's create a new layer and only leave the base color because we don't want the others. Click on the tree line icon and select the image this time. Then create a new texture and name it highlights and shadows for example. Then change the color to something grayish close to this. Pick up a white brush and start painting on the more exposed parts like these edges. Then press X to reverse the color and paint black on some areas randomly. Don't forget to name your layers so it doesn't get confusing. You can also switch to this brush and mix up these colors. Now let's make the stitches. If you were in substance, I would have done it in texturing, but here in Blender it's not that easy. But you can always bake this one to the texture at the end, so let's make it. First let's make a cube, then shift A again and add a path curve. Select the cube again and scale it down on the x-axis. Ctrl R to add a loop cut right in the middle and move it up. While this one is selected, hold shift and select the curve, then press Ctrl P and object to parent it with the path. 
Now in the modifiers, we got a couple of modifiers, including subdivision modifier and an array modifier. Move the array on top, then a curve modifier at the end and select the curve as the object. If it didn't look right, just change the deform axis to something else until it looks right. Change the fit type to fit curve. Then choose the curve as the object here as well. If it didn't work, Ctrl A and apply its location. If it's still not working, go back to fix count in array modifier. Now select bolt and scale it down. Rotate it and place it on one side of the shoe. While the curve is selected, go to edit mode and start shaping the curve so it lands exactly on the surface of the shoe. You can enable snapping, but that might not work in all scenarios. Now select the last point on the line and press E to extrude the line until we reach the top. After that, if you put it on fixed count, increase the count and it automatically follows the extended line on the curve. It is still way too big. To make it smaller, we can click on any part of the stitches, then go to edit mode. Press A to select all, then scale it down. Once we get out of the edit mode, all of them are smaller. If some parts of it went in or outside of the shoe, make sure you fix them first. For the next part, we don't need to do it all over again. We just need to duplicate the first one, delete most of the points so we can start from the beginning. Again, do the same thing for the back part. We are just duplicating and extruding the line to fill out the crease. Don't forget that you can enable the snap tool on the top to make it easier. Just make sure these are your settings. Sometimes we got two sets of stitches. We can simply just duplicate the last one and bring it besides this one and fix its position. Let's do that to the other stitch lines too. We can add another one close to the edges too, since those parts are usually heavily stitched. Now let's select one of them and give it a material. I'm gonna go with a color a bit lighter than the leather. Now to give the material to all of the other stitches in one step, we can select all of them, then select the one with the material at the end. Then press Ctrl L and link materials. Now select the donut thingy around the whole of the laces and give it a simple metallic material. Then using the same method, we can select all of them, then the one with the material at the end and link the materials. To texture the shoelaces, we gotta unwrap the UVs first, which is pretty easy since they're already separated. We just have to select all and unwrap it. UV unwrapping the knot is a bit more complicated, but we can select few edges in the knot and press U and mark seam, then unwrap again. Now it's flat and better than before, but it does still have some problems that we can fix manually in the UV editing tab. Now just like before, click on reset material to start the process. I have found this fabric texture that I think would look good for the shoelaces, but you can use all sorts of fabric materials. After you downloaded it, add it to the mesh just like before. The texture is a bit too big, so let's increase the scale to make the details smaller. Then link all of the objects to the one with the material. The color is too similar to the shoe. I want to change it to something brighter. So let's go to the shader editor and add a hue and a saturation node and drop it before the base color. Increase the hue and value a bit more to make it more red and also brighter. Don't forget to select the tip of the laces in the edit mode and assign a metallic material to it. I give the heels a brighter color, select the middle parts, add a new material and assign it only to these parts. We can add a darker color, similar to the shoes, to this part. Now we got a nice line on the top and bottom, but the overall material is too flat. To fix that, let's add a noise texture. Also a mix color node and connect the noise texture to its factor. Now we can give the brown color to one of them and give one of them a darker color. Gotta do the same thing for the lighter part too. So let's select these nodes, Ctrl C to copy, switch to the other material and paste it here. Then connect it to the base color. After that, we can change both colors to a lighter color, but one of them should be a bit darker. To make it even more realistic, we can add some shadows behind the stitches. So let's add a new layer and name it Darken. Create a new image texture, change the color to white which I forgot to do, then click on the brush icon to start painting. Pick up a black brush and start painting on these stitch lines. We can put the base color on multiply or disable the base color and enable ambient occlusion. Then select the dark and image texture as AO. We can also add some fake shadows behind this one too, on the same image texture. And this is the final results on Cycles. Like and sub if you found it helpful and be sure to check out my Gumroad and Patreon page to download the 3D files and real-time process video of making these boots and lots of other different characters. See you on the next one. Peace.